We are extremely pleased with the results of the, the uh, project so far and the possibilities of uh, virtually eliminating CLAPSI. Uh, so I will now turn this over back to Don Wright, uh, who will talk about uh, the changing landscape of HAI prevention. Thanks, Jim. Uh, at this point, we wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the changing landscape associated with healthcare-associated infection prevention. And there have been there has been an increased focus on reducing these infections, not only at the national level but at the state and local level over the last five to ten years. Next slide. <clears throat> The Affordable Care Act, which was uh, finalized about 18 months ago, had a direct uh, link to healthcare-associated infections. Uh, in particular, the Affordable Care Act links payment to quality outcomes under Medicare called value-based purchasing. The Secretary was given a great deal of latitude in what areas she chooses for uh, linkage between uh, quality outcomes and payments. However, there were five areas that were prescriptive that must be included, and one of those was healthcare-associated infections as measured by the prevention metrics and targets established in the action plan that we discussed earlier in this presentation. Next slide. Certainly one of the, uh, there's been a great deal of interest at the state level in healthcare-associated infections. And if you went back to 2004, there were uh, only four states that were mandating reporting, public reporting of HAI rates, Florida, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Missouri. But if you fast forward until 2011, the landscape has changed dramatically. Uh, next slide. We now have uh, 28 states that are requiring uh, public reporting of HAI rates, and the ones that are uh, covered with a star are using NHSN as the reporting vehicle for the public reporting e effort. So you'll see over that seven-year period of time, there's been a marked increase in healthcare-associated infections at the state level, and this is a trend that we anticipate will continue uh, in the upcoming years as well. Next slide. Not only has there been uh, public reporting at the uh, state level, there's been an increased uh, interest in reporting HAI rates at the national level uh, through the CMS IPPS rule. Uh, on this, there will be uh, reporting of CLABSI rates and surgical site rates moving forward, and we have more on that uh, in the next slide. Next slide. You'll notice uh, on this slide we've enumerated what uh, Infections will be publicly reported through Hospital Compare and the IPPS rule moving forward. This year, hospitals that want to be a part of the paper reporting program will be asked to report uh, central line associated bloodstream uh, infection rates. And moving into 2012, the focus will shift to <coughs> catheter associated urinary tract infections and surgical side infections. There's some interest in 2012 as well of reporting. Um, HAI rates and uh, process measures in uh, in-stage renal dialysis centers, uh, as well as in long-term care facilities. Uh, if we move into 2013, there's an interest in MRSA and clostridium in, uh, difficile infections, as well as immunization rates of healthcare workers for seasonal influenza. Next slide. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we released a national action plan in June of 2009 that we felt uh, served as a national roadmap. Uh, earlier in 2009, uh, through the funding bill, Congress required every state to create a state action plan to reduce healthcare-associated infections that cascaded down from and was completely consistent with the national plan. Uh, and these were further incentivized by linking the state action plans to CDC prevention block grants. I'm very pleased to say that all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico all submitted uh, for review by the department state action plans. They were Additionally, they were required to uh, follow two metrics uh, that supported the HHS action plan moving forward. Now, if you look at the next slide, You'll see um, through this histogram what particular uh, hospital-acquired infections are most uh, followed at the state level. Clearly, central line-associated bloodstream infections are uh, 
being followed uh, longitudinally by 42 of the 50 states, and that's followed closely by surgical site infections uh, and MRSA infections. Next slide. Let me say there's been an effort to increase the state capacity uh, at the state level. Now each state has an HAI coordinator that's focused on and responsible for implementation of the state action plans that I just discussed. In addition to that, each state has created a multidisciplinary advisory committee to work collaboratively on HAI prevention, and this includes healthcare institutions, healthcare providers. Uh, as well as healthcare consumers. Uh, let me also say that many states have enhanced capacity to monitor HAIs using the CDC's NHSN or other systems uh, moving forward. <clears throat> To increase the dialogue and to learn from best practices, there is a state-level partners meeting uh, scheduled for Dallas-Fort Worth from S September 15th through 16th, so, <clears throat> focused on collaboration around eliminating healthcare-associated infections. The list of topics that will be discussed in that particular conference is indeed lengthy, but includes alignment of state-level prevention programs and resources. We'll look at the impact of federal legislation and initiatives at the state level, and conversely, the impact of state legislation and reporting requirements on the national scene. Uh, and we'll focus on achieving reduction uh, goals in the national and state action plans in an era, era of limited funding, which is certainly a challenge not only nationally, but locally as well. Next slide. I wanted to say that the Center for Disease Control has really taken a lead at uh, publishing and following national uh, data of HAI rates as well as state-specific data. Uh, they recently have summarized CLABSI and SSI uh, reporting rates not only nationally but also for the states across the country. Uh, their most recent report focused on data from July to December of 2009, uh, and we're using the data that they are presenting to to measure our success in achieving the goals in the action plan. I'm very pleased to say that as it relates uh, to central line associated bloodstream infections, they documented a 17% reduction uh, in central line rates, as well as an 8% reduction in surgical site uh, infections. If you're interested in your particular state data, the website is provided on this slide to allow you to access that information. Next slide. I want to also say that a great deal has been done in the area of research. As Dr. Jernigan mentioned, uh, <clears throat> clearly we uh, have gaps in our knowledge in preventing these infections, and I'm very pleased to say that there has been resources to help fill some of that uh, <clears throat> knowledge vacuum. Uh, there have been $34 million to uh, uh, expand our efforts to fight uh, healthcare-associated infections. Uh, clearly, we want to help expand uh, efforts to fight HAAs in hospitals, ambulatory care settings, in-stage renal disease facilities, and long-term care. Uh, ARC has worked very collaboratively and closely with the Center for Disease Control uh, in Atlanta, as well as CMS and other in a <coughs> HHS stakeholders to try to identify the gaps in our existing knowledge base and to fill those through uh, funding additional research uh, efforts moving forward. And there's a, a website here that will allow you to look at what projects have been funded moving forward. Next slide. As I finish up my discussion, I want to mention the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation Center. Uh, this was a new center that was established through the Affordable Care Act, uh, established to revitalize and sustain Medicare, Medicaid, and the CHIP program moving forward. Uh, and certainly there is going to be a focus on the triple aim, better health care, better health and population health, and more affordable health care through a reduced cost. 